Hello, and welcome back to another video of Code Nerd. So today's video is going to be on a game that is just like the original game Flappy Bird, uh, where there is a bird and the pipes uh, come towards you and you try to not get hit by the pipes. Obviously this version will not be in color and it does not run on the graph screen because it would be quite slow. Uh, if you'd use assembly, however, it would run fairly well and probably fairly fast. Uh, I would like to mention that this game was made by my friend. Uh, I optimized it a little bit for him, uh, but he did a very good job of making this program. So uh, awesome job to you. Uh, so yeah, let me show you what program Flappy Bird is and how it runs. Okay, now let me show you program Flap. So right off the bat, uh, it will start the game. Uh, as you can see, it runs fairly fast. Uh, it's not as fast as it could be but it is a compromise between speed and you actually being able to see it run, uh, like the bird and everything, because I had a version that ran really fast, uh, but you couldn't see anything. Uh, so as you can see, uh, your score is right up here, and I have six, which is actually not a bad score. I normally don't get a lot. Um, and so you just have to click the second button, or you can customize it to make it the up button or anything like that. And uh, when we do get into the program, I will actually uh, tell you what you can do for that. Um, so as you can see, I did hit uh, the edge there, so I do die. Uh, if you hit the bar, I'll just show you really quick, uh, you will also die. And if you go off the top or the bottom of the screen uh, like that, it will end the game. Uh, so overall, it's a really solid game. It's a fun game to play. And uh let me uh, just do a quick little time lapse of me playing a little bit of Flappy Bird, and then I'll show you how you can program this on your own calculator. Okay, now let me show you how you can make program flap on your own calculator. So we're going to start off with clear home to get anything off the graph screen, or sorry, the home screen uh, that may be on the home screen. Uh, clear home is very commonly used as the first line in the program uh, to get uh, rid of anything that may interfere with the gameplay. 4 store to Y, negative 1 store to S, and 4 store to H. Those are all variables that we'll be using later. Uh, y is the position of the bird, S is your score, and H is the height of the pipe. Repeat until k is equal to 45, clear home. If y is not equal to h and y is not equal to h minus 1, return or end the program. Uh, and the reason I don't use stop is because stop can cause issues. Uh, so that is the reason why I use return as opposed to stop. Randit 3 comma 7 store into h and s plus 1 store into s. Output at 1 comma 1 comma s. And you might be wondering why... Uh, if I check that y is not equal to h and y is not equal to h minus 1, don't I also have to check to make sure, well, because I might be way up here and the pipe might be all the way at the bottom, but the pipe hasn't reached me yet. And that is a very good point, and normally I would say that you'd have to do that, but because of how I've set up this for loop, which is the main game for loop, until it reaches that point, it doesn't need to check it until it's right at that point, which it does in that main game for loop. Otherwise, yes, I would have to check it, but because of the way that I have the program set up, I don't have to until the very end or technically the beginning of the program there. Get key store into K. I'll put it Y comma two comma quote a space. Uh, y plus one minus two multiplied by K is equal to 21 store into Y. So the reason that I add one and subtract two only if and only if k is equal to 21 is because I'm automatically assuming that you don't press uh, k or sorry, the second button, which is 21. And you can change that and I'll go over that in just a second here. Um, so I'm automatically assuming that you're dropping. So your position, let's say, is the second button. Okay, so I'm adding one. So now you're at the alpha button, but your original position was the second button. And if you do, in fact, click the second button, which I know is a little bit confusing because that's the heights that I'm referencing. Um, but if you, let's say, click the up button, then it because you already it assumed that you dropped one, 
you not, e not only need to subtract one, you need to subtract two to jump one from your original height. So that is how that little piece of Boolean logic works here. And the k is equal to 21 part is just a statement saying that if k is equal to 21, uh, because how Boolean logic works is everything is a one or a zero, it's written in binary, uh, and that's how that kind of works. So uh, one is true and zero is false also. Uh, the k is equal to 21 part, uh, you have 21, uh, that is the second key. And if you want a different key, uh, you can use a different key. Uh, for example, this is 11, the up key is 25, uh, the second key is 21, and you might be wondering where I'm pulling all these number out, numbers out of. So each row has a number, so this is row 1, this is row 2, uh, and this is row 3, the only row that has uh, 4 keys. The rest of them have 5 keys. So you will have an 11, a 12, a 13, a 14, and a 15 because this is the first key in the first row. So the row number comes first, then the key number. Since this is the second row, it's a two. And then it's the first key in the first row, so it's 21, hence where I get 21 out of. If y is greater than eight, or y is less than one, also end the game. I'll put it y comma two comma quote a theta, for x comma h plus one comma eight, output at x comma d comma quote an i, and for x comma one comma h minus two, so this uh, these two for loops here, they are just drawing the pipes, that's what those are doing. Uh, output at x comma d comma quote an i, and for x comma one comma eight, and then this one is erasing, and the reason it's at d plus one is because you don't wanna erase what you just drew, you wanna erase where the pipes were. So for our, yes, for x comma one comma eight, I'll put it x comma d plus one comma quote a space end. And there's three ends right there. And that is the entire program uh, to run Flappy Bird. It's a fairly short program, uh, pretty well optimized. Again, thank you to my friend for making this, uh, who actually has the TI-83 that I fixed for him. Uh, it was a really fun video to make. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you have fun playing Flappy Bird. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, and with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.